Salam everyone and welcome back to SomaliDispatch.com. Somalia announced on Tuesday it severed diplomatic ties with Kenya, accusing Nairobi of interfering in its political affairs. As Mogadishu prepared for the long-awaited elections scheduled for 2021. The move came after Kenya hosted the leadership of Somaliland, a breakaway state not recognized by Mogadishu, following months of tensions between the two neighbors. Somalia said that a meeting of the heads of the state of East African nations, IGAD, had been convened for December 20th in Djibouti to discuss the issues. To discuss the outcome of that meeting and what it means for both countries, we are joined by Abdrisak Mahdi Deis, an international relations expert and East Africa political analyst based in Minneapolis. Salam Abdrisak, uh, welcome to SomaliDispatch.com. Thank you. Um, could you give us a bit of a background on the overall uh, political and diplomatic uh, uh, relations or scenery in, in Eastern Africa these days? Uh, thank you again uh, for inviting me uh, to your channel. Uh, just to give you a little bit uh, of a background, especially the Horn of Africa region. Uh, countries are in constant competition with uh, each other, uh, where if every country wants to dominate uh, in that region, uh, so that they will be relevant in the international arena. So there has been a competition between, uh, for example, Kenya and Ethiopia, who are the most two powerful countries at the moment in that region, where Kenya leads in terms of economics and Ethiopia uh, leads in terms of a mil military might. Uh, Somalia right now uh, is a fragile country. Uh, it has been in a civil war for almost 30 years and the government of Somalia does not control the entire region of its territory because of the uh, Al-Shabaab group who are uh, in constant attack, uh, always attacking the, uh, the federal government uh, of Somalia's troops. So uh, it, Somalia right now is not in a position where they can compete with other countries and instead cooperate with the neighboring countries, it's their borders and uh, overcome or defeat the terrorist group Al-Shabaab. So it doesn't give Somalia a foothold in the international uh, competition at the moment until they overcome the security situation in that country. So, so Ethiopia and Kenya right now are struggling or are fighting over the regional hegemony of, of that region, the Horn of Africa. Right. And um, as, as we all know, um, and uh, said it in the introduction, uh, Somalia and, and Kenya had a volatile uh, political uh, uh, relationship for the past 30 years, uh, perhaps from the days of independence. Um, but the couple of, uh, since last you know, few weeks, things have deteriorated to the point where Somalia cut uh, all diplomatic ties uh, with Kenya and recalled all of its uh, diplomatic staff from Nairobi. Um, and sent a complaint letter to IGAD, who had a, an extraordinary meeting in Djibouti uh, on uh, December the 20th. Uh, what was uh, Phila Somalia hoping would be the outcome uh, for that uh, session? At the Villa Somalia, uh, they were expecting their case to be taken seriously. Uh, Kenya admonished and told to stop the in, uh, interfering the eternal affairs of Somalia. But uh, just to go back a little bit, uh, uh, Somalia right now is uh, in, in, in an election year and many Somalis and especially uh, the most the scholars and those studied and also uh, international, uh, uh, international community who are involved in the situation in Somalia, they know that uh, the current deterioration of relationship with Kenya is uh, internally, internally or politically motivated because uh, uh, President Mohamed Abdullah Formajo and his government, uh, they have been on a campaign to replace all regional governments uh, with uh, administrator, administrations that are, are friendly to them and to their policies. So Jubaland and Butland are the only two uh, regional government states that stood to him and they were unable to change the governments or the regional government that existed there. So President Formaggio uh, and his team, they want 
to replace or at least to have a foothold in the selection of parliament members who will eventually elect the president of the Republic of Somalia. So because of Igar understands the internal politics of Somalia, they didn't take the issue seriously. And not only uh, the Somali-Kenya dispute, but also they put aside the Ethiopia and Sudan dispute. They didn't uh, include it in the main agenda that was discussed uh, in the summit. So Somalia was expecting at least Kenya to receive some form of admonishment from IGAD, uh, but they were told uh, to resolve the issues amicably through dialogue with, uh, with Kenya. Uh, Somalia, uh, it's, not, it's well to remember that Somalia wrote a complaint to IGAD, uh, and they severe ties again, and so they closed all the dialogue or diplomatic relations with Kenya. So they were told to uh, reinstate the relations to the point where they were before they uh, stop having any relationship uh, with, with Kenya so that they can solve the issues amicably and IGAD will be part of, uh, of the solution too. Uh, is Somalia happy with that outcome? Because um, as we know, a day later uh, when the summit concluded, the one-day summit, uh, Somalia recalled all its staff uh, from Nairobi. Uh, where does, what does that mean? Like, uh, we can't, uh, uh, if we analyze the statement the foreign minister of Somalia gave after the summit uh, in Mogadishu, uh, we can understand that Somalia was not happy about the outcome, but again, they were trying to convince Somali nationalists that it was a good outcome for them because the condition they put there uh, is to uh, establish a fact-finding committee uh, on what's going on on the, re on the border between Somalia and Kenya. Uh, which, uh, which is not, you know, uh, 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 any big achievement for the Somali government. So they were not happy about that and they were not expecting. Uh, we also understand that Somalia shares border uh, uh, with Kenya through many other uh, towns and cities like Doble, uh, Kolbio, uh, Amume, uh, Elwak, and Bellet Harbour is not exceptional. So why there is only a problem here in this, uh, in this uh, border city town of Bellet Harbour, not in other areas. So the international community, especially IGAD, they understood that and Somalia was not happy about that, but they were trying again, again to uh, erode the nationalistic sentiments of the Somali people so that they will achieve their support. Uh, in fact, uh, King uh, Egad uh, talked about uh, ex or uh, set expectations for the Somali government to work on, such as elections and, and, and um, carrying on um, the talks with Somaliland. How could that be interpreted? That could be int interpreted that uh, Somalia were taught to focus on the internal affairs of Somalia instead of creating uh, fake or pseudo uh, uh, conflict with Kenya, because uh, if we listen to the uh, to the speech that was given by the uh, uh, AU chairman uh, Musa Faki, he said it must be noted that Kenya is a troop contributing country to Somalia, and it hosts a large number of Somali refugees in Kenya, and which is in fact true. So Kenya is not the country where Somalia have to have uh, a fight or conflict with because of the interests that the people between the two countries are sharing at the moment, especially the Somalis heavily invested in Nairobi. And there's also about 500,000 refugees in the largest refugee camp in, in, in the world, which is the DAP. So Somalia should focus on the internal issues, uh, solve the problems they have with the opposition leaders, with the regional government states, and held elections on a timely manner uh, and consensus building internally instead of focusing external issues that does not exist at the moment. In a recent article that you wrote and analyzed the outcome of that meeting and the issues surrounding it, you, you've highlighted how the dynamic, the relationship, the diplomatic dynamic has changed uh, within Phila Somalia and how Phila Somalia sees the neighboring countries. Uh, you noted that President Formaggio in 2016 started his uh, presidential campaign in Nairobi. Um, and actually his rhetoric uh, included him chastising Ethiopia as an enemy of Somalia and was bracing highly of, of Kenya and Djibouti. We already uh, highlighted um, the relationship uh, Villa Somalia has with Kenya. 
What sort of a relationship does President Formaggio have with Djibouti? Yeah, it's, it's really interesting that you mentioned that uh, in 2016, President Formaggio was campaigning from Nairobi and now he's accusing Kenya of harboring and hosting opposition leaders uh, and held, holding their campaigns uh, for, in Nairobi, uh, which is hypocritic, you know, uh, double standard uh, from the government of Somalia, especially President Formaggio. Uh, he has a good relationship with Djibouti, who also invited President Bihi to their country. And also the same way Ethiopia invites uh, like a statesman, President uh, Biri, and he's not severe in ties with both of them. They have a good relationship. So Kenya is uh, peculiar in this regard uh, and it's politically motivated. That part's interesting. So uh, the, the way the foreign policy of Somalia is run now is based on personal interest rather than national interest of the Somali uh, people and the Somali uh, uh, and Somalia, and and that's not how that's not how it works foreign policy in any nation because they have what they call a foreign policy that's stable that does not change regardless of the person who is in power at that time or the power or the party that's in power at the moment. So. It seems that to be changing a lot. We have seen President Formaggio praising Kenya for sending troops to Somalia and protecting the Somali people. And right now we see him abusing Somalia. It's because uh, he didn't get what he wanted from Jubaland State. So instead of uh, reconciling with the president of Jubaland, Ahmed Madobe, and sitting with him, instead of sitting with the uh, regional leaders of, of, of Gedo, uh, who are really his kinsmen because Somalia is based on 4.5 and that's where he comes, he, he belongs to. He is focusing on Kenya and creating uh, a fight that's not necessary at the moment and that does not translate about the national interest of the Somali people. Well, Somalia and, and, and Kenya have ex uh, ex experienced it over the years, skirmishes and, and relationships that are ups and down. It's not like Ethiopia used to be with Somalis, where if you wanted to appeal to Somali patriotism and, and, and get a campaign going like he did in 2016, Ethiopia would have been that person. Um, so you, you've mentioned the relationship Somaliland has with the Djibouti and, Djibouti and, and Ethiopia currently, mm -hmm. um, and how the president didn't sever uh, re the relationship with them. Uh, it's interesting to know that a week after the summit, President Bihe actually is currently in Djibouti uh, as a president of Somaliland and he's been received as such. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so how would, how, where would we go from this? Uh, if you were from Somalia or uh, if you were Somali looking at this, uh, where do we go from here in terms of uh, relationships in the Horn? Uh, Somalia uh, could not cut relations with any country that uh, welcomes the, uh, any president of Somaliland. Because if we keep doing that, then uh, we will be uh, at war with all countries in the world. Uh, the issue of Somaliland, uh, we cannot ignore it. It's there and it exists, but we need to solve it internally. Uh, we cannot force them not to go anywhere way in the world. Uh, the president of Guinea-Bissau, when they welcomed uh, President Bihi, uh, Somali severe ties with them, uh, and now with Kenya. Uh, Even though Somali also, didn't yes, have a relationship with uh, Guinea. With Guinea, correct, correct. Uh, so uh, what I'm saying is this, if I'm in Villa Somalia, uh, I rather have a good relationship with all countries, whether they have a warm welcome or warm relationship with the with Somaliland or not, because they too are Somalis. If they have good relationship, then they are developing uh, economic ties with those countries which benefit Somali people. Uh, so it doesn't matter whether they support or, or whether they, whether they cut uh, ties with them, uh, because the, it's the inter, inter, in the national interest of the Somali people to have a business relationship, a good relationship, a good neighboring relationship with all countries in the world, whether that happens in Hargeza or Mogadishu is the same thing because they are both Somalis and the people, the beneficiaries are all Somalis. So the Somali government should stop intimidating uh, foreign countries, especially those that they don't like, uh, severe ties with them, and rather focus on the national interest of the Somali people, regardless of where they live. 
Right. I, uh, I appreciate your time and, and your expertise in this manner. And I hope to talk to you about other issues uh, pertaining to Somalia and Horn, Horn of Africa. Uh, that was Abdirisar Diaz. He's in Minneapolis joining us from the United States. Again, thank you very much and uh, have a good night. You too. Thank you.